G'day everyone, I'm Brett and welcome to Self Reliance Australia. Pretty excited about this week's uh, episode because it's a job that I've been wanting to get out into the yard for a while. You've probably seen it up in the shed already in a couple of videos past, especially the shed tour, and that is the garden. One of the things that I've said for a while is that I would like to get to about 80% self reliance on the food that we grow. Now I'm not too sure if we'll ever get there, whether that's just a pipe dream or not, I'm not too sure. But the first step is to build the garden and get it out in the yard. So this episode is a bit of a bit of an unboxing, bit of a build, and also a bit of an installation. So let's get into it. So these came in the post a little a few months ago, uh, probably around Christmas time actually. And look, I got this recommendation from Mark over at Self Sufficient Me from watching his channel. I can't say he actually personally told me because he probably has no idea I even exist. But I do love his channel and uh, look, in, uh, he recommends these, so I have bought them on that recommendation. Uh, we're going to put one together and we're going to place it over there. You might be able to see the dirt over there if I can zoom in. That's the dirt I'm going to put over near that shipping container right next to it because that will get the morning sun and reflect off the container and have a bit of afternoon shade as well. So we'll see how that plan works out. So the box they come in is a nice solid stiff cardboard box uh, well glued together so it's not coming undone in a hurry. Um, but look what impressed me was that the quality of the packaging they came well protected and more importantly I was happy with the way that they arrived. So there's no scratches on them, none of them were bent, all the gear was there and so it was just a really good put together um, package. And as you can see there's all the pieces, they're reasonably small pieces actually, which is good so they fit into a small box or post. So I got all the hardware there, uh, which looks good. I might go get a power drill to um, screw all those together. What I didn't realise until we started pulling all the pieces apart was each individual sheet and each individual piece has actually got this plastic coating over top of it which is easy enough to tear off but again it was just that, that forethought in protecting you know a garden and like some people just think oh it's just a garden that's going to get knocked around out, outside. But the, the crew at Birdies have actually gone to the extent of you know, putting this plastic wrapping on and I know it's probably not environmentally friendly but you know, when you're buying a quality product it just, it's just really nice to see it turn up without any damage on it. Um, and look I've paid more dollars for say the pot on top of the car which actually did arrive with damage on it so this is a really nice touch. So we've got it unpacked, we've taken the plastic off. Got my trusty helpers putting together. We've got to screw the sides together first before we start putting the corners on. Uh, so we do have some bracing if we come across to the hardware over here. So we've got some threaded rod and some bracing that we need to screw together and that'll hold it so when you put the dirt in, it doesn't all collapse. Now the instructions, always read the instructions. Well, sometimes. When all else fails, you read the instructions, don't you? But it's pretty clear, um, which is handy. Now, so at this stage, we're just doing them finger tight, and then we'll tighten it all up nice and tight once we get it all back together. But that's where we're up to our next stage. So one side's done. One side's done. You notice that the third hole from the bottom is not screwed up. Well, that is because the instructions said to leave that one free for the bracing so that's where we put the bracing in um, to put it into hold it all together so so far looking good it's now coming together um, obviously still putting the screws on loosely it probably is easier with two people doing it especially when you're putting the side panels on so let's just put the bracing on. As you can see, I've got two rows of bracing on the inside there. Uh, the instructions don't necessarily say for that, but look, I did just because of the sheer volume of the dirt I was putting in. But look, it's all pretty simple to put together. Um, good instructions, good quality components. 
happy to work with. So after going around and doing 20,000 little nuts by finger tight, uh, I then went got the power drill and just screwed it off. So I use a little spinner that comes with a kit, put that on the back and then just tighten it up. You can you can reduce the pressure on the on the drill so you're not over tightening and stripping any threads. But it was just a nice quick way to finish the job off. So that's a completed product. We've got it all together. I've had a lot of really good help. So the tools that we use were fingers, a lots of, um, and look to put it together just to tighten up. So you have to do all the screws just finger tight first and then we go around and do it. So the pack came supplied with this little um, spanner uh, to hold the, hold the nuts on the back and tighten up. But what we actually used was an eight mil socket on a, on a ratchet uh, and look, that sped up the process along with a stubby screwdriver. But I then used this tool with that little baby. Um, so the power, the power drill actually sped that process up a lot but also saves you the risk as well. So that's an eight mil, so there's an eight mil socket on all of these ones down the side. But on the rods that actually support in the middle are a 13 mil socket that I put together there. So that was all put together, finger tight, those support beams through the middle. And what that kit, kit comes all supplied with that, which is really good. And also included is this nice little safety rubber bit along the top to get rid of any sharp edges when you're working around the edge of the garden. So the size of that is just over 1500 wide and just over 2800 long. So that's got, and it's I think 740 high. Rightio, so the garden's now in its spot. Uh, you notice I haven't come out in line with the edge of the container. That's because I actually want to build a little bit of a barrier there. Stop the wind coming up because the wind sort of comes that direction. Um, but also have enough space to put a wheelbarrow down there so I can actually do work in the garden at some point once we've got all the veggies up and going. I have put it up against the, like tight, up against the edge of the container, um, mainly because it's not gonna have dirt up against the, sh the container, so it's not gonna rust that out. But also, it, that wall gets the morning sun, so it gets quite warm, and be a great place to hopefully put a trellis up there and get some tomatoes going. Now, so as you can see, it's just got nothing in the bottom at the moment. So the intent will be to get those logs, tree branches into the bottom and then I want to get some mulch over the top of that so I've actually got some leaves that are sitting up under some trees up in the front corner of the property, put that down and then I've got some nice fresh dirt to put in as well. So we'll keep you posted as we go along. So these bits of wood are pretty heavy actually, look I've got it from a branch that came down at the front corner of the property. Look, I posted a video a while ago on that particular branch that came down. I think the video is called The Widowmaker. But look, those big gum branches do weigh a lot. But look, I could have used it for firewood, but instead I actually had this job in mind. And here's Bibbles the sheep coming out to give me a hand. Um, gee, Bibbles is more videos than me, I think, almost at this point. But anyway, look, I knew I wanted to put this wood into the bottom of the garden uh, just to give that long-term organic matter there for it. So I haven't actually used it for firewood at this point in time, but look, I'm really happy with the way it's actually filled up the base of the garden. And I'm lo really looking forward to what that long-term breakdown will be within the garden. So there we have it. Look, I haven't obviously covered the entire base, but I reckon there's enough organic matter. There's some pretty big logs in there. You probably saw me struggling with some of them. Um, the next thing is now to try and get some leafy composty type stuff. Um, and we'll put it over the top. So you can see the mud as I'm walking through the paddock there. We've just had a lot of rain over the last couple of weeks. But look, the tool that I'm actually using here to pick up these leaves, they're like rakes that you fit your hands through. So instead of having a, like a rake on the end of a stick, they just basically put your hands through and you just work them all like hands. Um, so extended hands really. And look, they work really good on this type of work, which is just picking up the loose leaf Nice mulchy type stuff that sits on the ground um, and then put them into a wheelbarrow. So this is what I'm putting in. You can see it's like a leaf. Like on the top the leaves are dry but underneath they've just been composting away. There's just organic matter in there. So some leaves, some twigs and it's just all starting to break down. So I reckon that's going to be a nice mix. And you won't see, well, there's no weeds or anything growing in that because it's just 
a nice cover. So by putting that in there, I'm hoping to get a nice organic base. So it's just about to start to rain. I was wondering if I was going to get another load in before the rain hit. I'm glad I pushed it a little bit. It's just starting to drizzle now. Um, but look, I'm happy with where I'm at with that. That's a nice lot of organic matter in there. And now I just have to get that pile of dirt into here. Now I was in two minds whether to fill up a barrow and bring it across, but look, the pile of dirt was just that little bit too close to, I thought, to make it worthwhile. So I'm just doing one shovel load at a time. So digging through the dirt, just moving around, and this pile is just full of worms, which is fantastic. You can see it even going to there. So this has been the case all morning so far, as I've been transferring. So I've been going for a little bit now. Putting some dirt in. It's not a super hot day. The sun hasn't really poked its head out from behind the clouds yet. But that's the dirt going in, so it's not looking too bad. It's a nice rich mix, so pretty happy that got lots of worms in it. So two hours in, we only get half of that, or maybe a little bit more than half done. But this is where we're currently at. So pretty happy with that. Okay, so that's another job done. As you can see, we've got all the dirt in there. And look, actually, you can see the shade line across there. So it's now roughly about 1.30 in the afternoon. We are in winter, so the sun's a bit lower in the sky. Um, so it's probably more shade than I would have hoped. Um, but having said that, we will get full morning sun. Um, so that'll be good for the veggies. Um, we'll just see how that pans out. But hopefully that dark wall at the back will also hold a bit of heat. And if we stop the wind hitting it, it should be pretty good. But look, that's taken a few hours to get that dirt in there because we have done it all by hand. I had a little bit of help here just to finish off that last bit. So thank you for that. Um, but no, I'm really happy with that. Um, so that's how it looks. I have to say those wire threads through the middle has actually held the shape of that exceptionally well. Like I was expecting that to sort of balloon out a little bit, but clearly the guys at Birdies have done their research and that has held exceptionally well. Look, I know it's not super clean, but look, the rain will fix that, if not the sheep, when the sheep come and rub themselves against it. Um, and so the next job would be working out how to stop the sheep from eating the veggies that grow in there. But look, if you enjoyed that, give the big thumbs up, that would be great. Uh, I have to say a big thank you too for everybody. A couple episodes ago was episode 50, and also hit 250 subscribers, but I think now we're over well over 270 so thank you so much to everyone for your support on the channel until next time i'll see you then